I'm dedicated to making a dedicated YouTube live streaming camera. And in this episode, we're gonna be working on the touch screen. Stop it. I hate touch screens. Okay, in the last episode, we left off by adding a touch screen to our Raspberry Pi and making a basic demo for it. Truth be told, at the time, the touch screen was barely working and getting it to work properly ended up being a waking nightmare. <sighs> but we'll swing around back to that in a bit. For now, let's get it streaming. If at any point I'm going too fast and you wanna take a deeper look at the steps, parts, and code, you can visit all that at the project page on hackster.io. Also, hackster.io is an official sponsor of this video, so that's a thing too. Why don't you guys go ahead and click, browse, happy, happy. With the Pi shut down, you want to remove the touchscreen and add your Raspberry Pi camera to this port. Then you can replace your touchscreen and boot it back up. You can connect through SSH and run the Raspi config utility and go to interfacing options, camera, and select yes to enable it. Got the camera hooked up. Now let's live stream. Most of the popular live streaming websites use a protocol called RTMP to accept incoming live streams. So while I'm gonna be using YouTube for this project, it should be a similar process for other live streaming websites like Twitch and Facebook. And that's really good to know, especially if you don't have live streaming capabilities on YouTube. So head over to your creator's dashboard and assuming you've been verified for live streaming, go to the live streaming dropdown and you can either choose stream now to go live immediately or you can go to events and make a private stream just for testing. Just create a new event, fill out the details, make sure custom encoding is selected, and then click create event. Then under bit rate, select what video size you'll be streaming at. To keep things simple, I'm gonna be using 360p. Now this will give you your private key and the live streaming URLs that you can copy over and save for later. After that, you can click on Live Control Room and you'll see a big red banner at the top saying that no data is being received from our encoder. So let's hop over to the Raspberry Pi and make a test stream. Okay, to send our camera data through the streaming URL, we first need to convert it. And after days of trial and error, I found that the FFmpeg utility is the best tool for the job but it can be a pain in the biscuits to install. So let's just go ahead and get this over with. First, do apt-get update to update your software and then add these repositories. Update it again, install this key ring, and then update it a final time. Next, install all the required libraries to go along with the FFmpeg utility, including this X264 codec from VLC that you need to configure, make, and then make install. Now we can clone over FFmpeg from GitHub, configure it to these settings, and then run make-j4 to use all four processor cores in the Raspberry Pi 3. And even then, this step still takes about an hour. Finally, run make install to install it. Oh, vey, it's finally done. Now let's jot up a Python script and get it streaming. Import these three libraries, make variables for the streaming URL and your private key, and then make a variable with this long FFmpeg command that converts the camera video to a compatible stream. Now here's the tricky part. Also create a subprocess variable that pipes our camera output to the FFmpeg stream. Now we can configure the camera and start our main loop. I'm first gonna flip the camera around so that it's not upside down, and then try to start the recording process, sending it all over our FFmpeg stream that we created. Now we can just loop through the wait record command to stream it. Adding this interrupt allows us to easily exit by pressing a keyboard button. All right, now let's save it and run it. And there we go, live stream success. What would our camera be without a touchscreen interface? It would be sub awesome, and I can't have that. But let me let you in on a little secret. Setting up the touchscreen was a dag blessed disaster, but I was finally able to get it to work, so to spare you guys the heartache that I went through, I'm gonna show you how I did it. The problem I was having with the touchscreen is that it could detect when it was being touched, but it couldn't pinpoint the location where that touch was happening. 
After almost a week of troubleshooting, it ended up being an issue with the Adafruit touchscreen that I got and the current version of the Raspbian operating system. So to fix it, I had to set up the older Raspbian Wheezy distribution points so that I could download the Raspbian Wheezy touch library and install it on the Raspbian Jesse operating system. And that ended up doing the trick, so hopefully if you guys are having a similar issue, this should fix it. Now with the touchscreen working like a champ, we can finish the code. I took inspiration from this Adafruit digital camera project because it uses Pygame to display the camera image as the screen background. It's a clever little workaround that streams the camera into an image buffer and then rapidly loads those images onto the Pygame screen. So combining that with the streaming script and the touchscreen test script from our previous video, I came up with this code, which you can find on the hackster.io project page. Running the code, it gives you the options to either preview or stream. Pressing the preview button lets you see the camera on the LCD, and pressing the stream button streams the camera to YouTube. Ah, oh, after all this relentless trial and error, it's good to have a working prototype. Feel free to play around with the code and see what features you can add to it. You could try to increase the streaming resolution and see where you get. But I set my streaming resolution to 360p and it already had a 10 second lag time. So I'm thinking that the more you increase the resolution, the worse the lag is gonna be. One feature I played around with was being able to preview and live stream at the same time. And I was able to get it to work, kind of. It ends up that it made both the preview and the live stream that much more choppy and functionally useless. So what features would you like to see? Let me know in the comments below. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.